Tailwind version 4 is almost out. It's now an alpha release, and that means we can all get our hands on it and try it out, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So real quick, their blog post, which I've linked to in the description, goes over all the new features, but the really big one is the new Oxide engine that replaces the old tool chain that used to use post-CSS and auto-prefixer with a brand new unified tool chain written in Rust, which is, I guess, what we do nowadays, on top of Lightning CSS, and the sum total is it's basically 10x faster than what we had before. Now, at the end of the blog post, it covers how to try it out with Vite or the CLI, and that's great, but I wanted not to show you V4 on Vite, but also on Next.js and Astro as well, and even try it out with ShadCN. Let's get into it. The first thing we're going to try V4 out on is Next.js. And to do that, we are going to use the gigantic component starter that I built in a previous video showing how to take a gigantic Tailwind component and break it into its parts and pieces. We're going to go see how Tailwind 4 applies to this gigantic Tailwind component. So I'm going to copy the starter into a new directory called Gigantic Components. And then I'm going to bring that up in VS Code. Of course, all of this code is available to you for free in a link in the description right down below. Let's first fire it up and see how it looks before v4. All right, we got our nice big product page with lots of Tailwind in it. So we're going to stress out v4. We're going to see if it actually works with all of this cool Tailwind. Now, I built this application using Next.js with the regular template. And that was just using, I guess, v3.4 probably of Tailwind at the time. So let's see how we can port it to v4. So the first thing we're going to do is add the Tailwind CSS at next. That's going to give us the V4 release. And we're also going to use Tailwind CSS post CSS. So that's their flavor, I guess, of post CSS. Also at the next version. So let's hit go. Now the next thing we should do is remove the content from our Tailwind config. There we go. We deleted it. That's one of the really cool things about this Oxide engine. You don't actually have to specify the content. It has a much better content finder. It'll find anything in any directory inside the source. So that's really cool. But you know, honestly, we're not actually doing a lot in here. We're setting up the background image, which we're not even using. We're not putting any plugins. So you know what? I'm just going to delete this altogether. Bye bye, Tailwind config. But now I do need to go and alter my post CSS config. So currently we've got these plugins, Tailwind CSS and Auto Prefixer. We're going to replace that with Tailwind CSS post CSS. Let's give it a go. And boom, it's entirely unstyled. So that's not great. Well, what's the problem? Well, if I go over into my source, my app, and into my globals.css, we're basically bringing in all the Tailwind. That's not how you do it anymore. Now we use the import command and specify Tailwind CSS. What's it save? And there we go. Now we have version four of Tailwind on our Next.js application. It's that easy. I love it when we're removing code to get into a port. That is amazing. Next up, I'm going to show you how to do v4 in Vite. Now back in the terminal, I'm going to create my Vite TW4 application using the React template. Now I'll bring that up in VS Code. Now this doesn't have any Tailwind in it at all, so we're actually gonna start by installing Tailwind. Now again, I'm gonna bring in Tailwind CSS at the next release, but I'm also gonna bring in Tailwind CSS slash Vite. That is the Vite adapter for V4. Now over my Vite config, I'm gonna bring in the Tailwind CSS plugin, and then I'm going to invoke that. Then over in my source, I'm going to get rid of everything in the app CSS, don't need that anymore. I'm going to replace everything in the index CSS with that import Tailwind CSS, just like we did in Next. And you know what? That's probably good enough. So I'm going to go over to my app.jsx. I'm going to replace that with just hello from Tailwind 4, big and bold. Let's hit save. And see how it looks. There you go. Hello from Tailwind 4, big and bold. Now, that's not a great demo. Let's make that even better. So I'm going to go back into my index HTML. And first, I'm going to get this into a dark theme by painting the background black and giving us a white text. There you go. Nice white on black. And then I'm going to bring some example code into app.jsx. Of course, all of this code is available to you in the GitHub repository, so you don't have to type it in for yourself. Let me just go show you what it looks like, and then we can talk about it. 
Okay, cool. Look at this. We've got a cool poster display for our Dune movies. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to show you how this works responsibly. So we're going to go from a horizontal card layout to a vertical card layout. Isn't that cool? And the way that that's done is with container queries, which are now built into V4. So you don't need to bring in the container query plugin. Thank you. Thank you. So right at the top here, we've got a div that uses the tailwind at container. That says that that div is a container for container queries. So any container queries from then on down are relative to that div, which is that container. Then in the main, we can use things like at XL flex and at XL flex wrap to say that when that container is in the XL size, then we want to move into flex mode with flex wrap. That's what gives us our two card layout. So instead of doing XL, like you would with a media query, you use at XL and that gives you a container query. So why not just use a media query instead of a container query? Well, the great thing about a container query is it actually is laying out everything relative to the size of the container and that container can be any div inside the application. So if I were to wrap this in a div that was just say medium size, If I go back into my application, now because the container that we're laying out in is smaller, we are getting our vertical layout. So it's automatically adjusting to the size of the container that it's placed within, which is fantastic because if you're only using media queries, you're not actually relative to what you're being contained within. You're actually just always relative to the whole size of the page. Now here's something that's even cooler about these container queries. I'm going to get rid of my exterior container. Now, I've given each title for each movie the class name of title. So now I'm going to define that title class in our index CSS. And here's the really cool thing. Now watch the size of the title. So what we're doing is we're scaling the size of the title based on the size of the container that we're placing the title into. So how are we doing that? Now inside of our title class, we've got two container queries. One is relative to the large size and another is relative to the small size of the container. Both adjust the font size, but they use two different clamping functions. Now clamp takes three parameters. The first is the minimum size. The second is your preferred size. And the third is the maximum size. So in the case of the large size, we're saying that we want to go from one rem to two rem, and we want to use the container query inline size as the scaling functions. So that's that two CQI. So that's why as you make the container smaller and smaller, that inline size gets smaller, so the font size gets smaller along with it. Mwah! So nice. All right, enough about container queries. Let's try V4 on Astro. So back in the terminal, I'm going to run my pmpm create command again, but this time I'm going to create an Astro app with the name Astro TW4. Again, all of this code is available to you in the GitHub link in the description right down below. I'm going to start off with an empty app. And I'll bring it up in VS Code. Now, this doesn't have Tailwind in it at all, so let's go and install Tailwind. Now, again, I'm going to use the next version of Tailwind CSS. It's going to give us V4, but I'm going to use PostCSS like we did with Next.js. Now, notice I've got no PostCSS config to adjust, so I need to create a PostCSS config. Now, normally I'd use JS here, but in the Astro context, we want to use a module. So I'm going to use MJS. Now, instead of saying module.exports and giving it that object, I'm going to say export default because that's how you do it in ESM. All right, let's go over to our source. And then inside of source, I'm going to create a new file called app.css. And in there, I'm going to import Tailwind CSS. That's going to give us Tailwind. And I'm just going to use exactly the same Dune example that we had before. So I'm going to do that title as well. And then finally, we need to go into pages into our index.astro file. And I'm going to replace the contents entirely with our Dune example and hit save. And let's see how we go. All right, this time we're on localhost 4321. Let's see. And there we go. Tailwind v4 on Astro. And all we needed to do was bring in the libraries, create a post CSS config, and then import Tailwind CSS into our app. And we had Tailwind v4. Now the news is not so good about Shad CN. Let's take a look. All right, so in the GitHub repo associated with this video, and the link in the description right down below, there's a ShadCN test directory that is a Next.js app router application on 14 that I installed ShadCN into. I then imported button into it, and then over in the page file, 
I created a bunch of different button variants, and let's take a look at the result. We get, unfortunately, no styling on Chad CN, which is a real drag. In addition to that, I actually did have to make some changes to global CSS. I had to remove the applications of border border and BG background because neither of those was defined inside of Tailwind. So there's clearly some issue with Shad CN and Tailwind at this time, but I'm sure that's all gonna get resolved. All right, well, I hope this helps you experiment with Tailwind V4 Alpha in your own applications. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.